As you know, economics is a study of how we maximize our living standards with the resources available. So in the next few lectures, we'll be talking about how high inflation can indeed undermine or intrude in our in the achievement of our living standards. So the consequences of high inflation include, first of all, this idea of resource allocation. So we know in the perfect marketplace, resources are allocated to their most productive use. And this is allocated in the operations of the free market. And if you want to remind yourself of how um, relative prices and price signals work, you can go into that lecture under the the microeconomic markets section of this of Talkboard. But we know that relative prices dictate resource allocation. So we know that producers seek to maximize profits. And we know consumers want to maximize their living standards. And so to minimize opportunity costs, resources are allocated to where the prices of goods and services are the greatest because this would then signify or signify to the producers that the resources are, should be allocated into these productive uses because they would maximize most or utilize or be utilized so that they satisfy I should say, so that they should satisfy most of their needs and wants. So resources are allocated due to this idea or this concept of relative prices. So now we're going to talk about how high inflation can in fact cause resource allocation to be less effective than otherwise it would be in the operation of the free market. Okay, so let's look at high inflation. And we know that inflation is the general increase in prices. But for simplicity, let's just assume that this economy only produces one thing, and that thing is TVs. So this economy only produces one, one thing, TVs. And TVs cost $1,000 each. Actually, let's say, let's say the, the economy produces two, two things, TVs, and radios. That could be a better example of why high inflation can indeed affect resource allocation. So TVs cost a thousand dollars each and radios cost a hundred dollars. So this is a very classy radio and it costs a hundred dollars each. And so we know that if the price of the TV increases to a thousand five hundred dollars each and the price of radio stays the same at $100, more resources will be diverted from the production of radios into TVs because TVs are proven more profitable for businesses. And by the same token, if we see that the price of radios in fact increase from $100 to $200, and the price of TVs only increased from $1,000 to $1,500, the relative increase in the price of radios, which is times 2, is greater than the relative increase in TVs, which is times 1.5. So more resources will be diverted into the production of radios because the relative price has increased. And so that's how resources are allocated um, according to their relative price and how consumers then send price signals to producers so that they produce more of certain goods which have higher or greater demand. But let's consider the impact of inflation. What if this TV increased to $1,500 because the inflation rate was 50%? And similarly, this increased to $150 because the inflation rate was 50%. Producers don't know whether this is caused by inflation, so caused by inflation or relative prices. Because as we know, inflation 
is or the, the calculation of inflation is in fact a lagging indicator and retail sales of TV and radios are in fact coincidental coincident indicators so what this means is that they can't take inflation from the previous um, period because they don't know whether the previous period actually has an effect on this period at the moment so we know that inflation so assuming that the inflation has increased by 50% from $1,000 to $1,500 and radios have increased from $100 to $150, producers have the problem of not knowing whether inflation has increased or the price of the, of the TV or the, the price of the radio has actually increased due to inflation or due to relative prices. So let's see this example here. Let's say in actual fact, TVs has increased to a price of $1,200 to be more realistic. And this is caused by inflationary changes in the TV because the cost of production of TV has increased. And so to maintain their profit margin, the producers of TV would therefore increase the cost of sale of their TV and this is 20% increase but on the other hand we can see that the price of radios has increased to $110 and this is not due to any inflationary change this is due to higher or greater demand for radios so this is due to the concept of relative prices. So people want to buy more radios and so the price of radios have actually increased. So here producers will see that because the radios have only increased 10% and TVs have apparently in inverted commas increased 20% then therefore they will devote more resources into the production of TVs because they see that this has increased greater relative to radios. The underlying economic reality is that the TVs have actually increased in price due to an increase in the cost of production of TVs, whereas the increase in the radius price was actually due to greater demand. So what happens here is there is now an inefficient allocation. of resources. And this is because producers, when there is a high inflation environment, don't know whether the price of certain goods and services have increased due to relative prices, which therefore encourages businesses to reallocate resources to that sector or due to the underlying inflation rate. And this is also known as noise in the price system. So producers colloquially or proverb proverbially can't hear the price signals sent by the, um, the by the consumers who demand certain products. So even though radios have increased at a lesser rate than TVs, it is because of relative prices and because of the high demand. And because we have high demand, therefore we need to produce more so as to satisfy the material needs and wants of consumers. But even though the TV has increased by 20% due to high inflation rates, by producing more, even though producers might, may possibly increase their profits, they are not actually satisfying the needs and wants of consumers. And so that's the consequence of high inflation, is that resource allocation may not be allocated to their most productive need. And therefore, noise in the price system would therefore ma not minimize opportunity cost in the resource allocation and therefore, consequently, not maximize the living standards of the people.